The original PlayStation was a fantastic games console, rich with history and games that ultimately made a profound impact on the games industry that we know today, and paved the way to continued success for PlayStation as a brand and a household name. But let's be honest, growing up with this... really takes you back. We've all got precious PlayStation memories that we'll never forget, but how about some things that you didn't know about the original Sony console? At this point you've probably heard a lot of facts, but for this video we're going to dive into more than 50 quick fire facts about the one and only Sony PlayStation. Initially, Sony was working with Nintendo to release a CD-ROM drive add-on to the SNES, which would be called the PlayStation. Nintendo backed out of this plan without telling Sony. At the time, Sony President Norio Oga was outraged by this decision and decided to make the PlayStation as its own console. The father of PlayStation, Ken Kutaragi, began his career making the SPC-700 sound soundchip for the SNES. The PS1's controller was designed to be more 3D looking because of PS1's 3D graphics, compared to the flat game controllers that was typically seen before the PS1 came out. Many Sony employees disliked the controller's 3D design, but Sony president Norio Oga approved it because he was a pilot and the controller reminded him of airplane controls. The PlayStation buttons Circle, Triangle, Square, and X all had specific meanings in their design. Triangle meant viewpoint, square meant map, circle meant yes, and X meant no. While most gamers pronounce the X button as X, it is actually pronounced as cross. PS1 discs were coated black because at the time, Sony felt this was a proper anti-piracy method that would make ripping the discs more difficult. This was also a design choice to make the system appear more cool. Despite the black disc effort from Sony, the PS1 launched around the time many home computers came with CD rewriter drives and piracy still became a big issue. Sony initially was in talks with Sega to develop a games console as well, but Sega of Japan did not consider the deal and ultimately rejected it and even called it a waste of time, thinking Sony did not know much about games or game hardware. Before the US launch of the PlayStation, Atari threatened to report Sony to the International Trade Commission if their console launched for less than $300 in defense of the Atari Jaguar. Sony still launched at $299. The PlayStation is the first console to ever sell over 100 million units. It reached this tremendous milestone 9 years and 6 months after its launch. One of the rarest PlayStation consoles ever made was the Midnight Blue Edition, celebrating 10 million consoles sold. A little less rare, but still in high demand, is the Net Yorosi system, a system that came in multiple colors and can be used to develop PlayStation games from home. They came in black, green, and blue, and can be found on eBay in the thousands. The PS1's best-selling title, Gran Turismo, took five years to make. This isn't too uncommon, but it was made by only seven people. In 2000, Sony launched a redesigned PlayStation console, but specifically named it PS1 to avoid confusion with the successor, the PlayStation 2. During holiday 2000, the PS1 actually sold more than the brand new PlayStation 2, though this was likely due to the shortage Sony had with PS2 supply. During Macworld 1999, Steve Jobs revealed a PlayStation emulator for the Mac, and demonstrated it with a demo of Crash Bandicoot Warped. Sony definitely was not pleased with this, and pursued legal action with the company responsible for the emulator. This is another game machine. It's the most popular game machine in the world. Wouldn't it be great if if we could play some of those titles too? Hmm. <clears throat> well, it is software that they're gonna sell for $49 that turns your Mac into a Sony PlayStation. It plays <clears throat> a few hundred. The PlayStation was initially considered a fantastic CD player by audiophiles due to its price to performance ratio compared to other high-end CD players. Some may not know, but the PlayStation launched with an official PlayStation mouse for point-and-click adventures and some FPS games later on. Ken Kutaragi, the father of PlayStation, actually hated the wildly successful Crash Bandicoot. He felt the game was too immature as PlayStation was intended for a more mature audience. The game released like any other game in Japan, but Sony Computer Entertainment America capitalized on the character and painted him as the mascot early on. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your stuff! Check it out. What do you think about that? We got real time, 3D. 
but originally, the PlayStation mascot was supposed to be Polygon Man. He was later pulled before the PS1 launched. Ken Kuduragi was angry at the fact that he was a flat shaded design rather than garage shaded. We wouldn't ever see Polygon Man again until the 2012 release of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, where he likely returns for his revenge on other big PlayStation IP. Now the actual PS1 mascot is Toro Inoue, who first appeared in Doko Demo Isio. While he is still used to this day, Toro is not known outside of Japan. He is referred to as the Sony Cat. The Pocket Station was a memory card for the PS1 that also acted as a small extension to existing PlayStation games with its own LCD screen and buttons. The Pocket Station was very successful and meant to release worldwide, but ultimately didn't due to it not meeting Japanese demand. However, US games still featured Pocket Station support at the time. In 1996, Sony released the Glastron, a head-mounted display with audio earbuds. The display was supported by the game Mech Warrior 2, where you could get a perspective from the inside of the cockpit of the mech. PS1 was so successful that games were still being released and sold until 2006. At the time, game storage was a mere 12 MB, but the PlayStation CD was a massive 650 MB, which allowed the storage necessary for big 3D games. Despite this, games later on still struggled to fit on the CDs. Many games used three discs, but Riven, the sequel to Myst, used a total of five discs. The PlayStation game Wipeout was advertised in clubs around Britain, featuring the game's electronic soundtrack. Final Fantasy VII was originally meant to be a detective story. Instead of Cloud, it was supposed to be a character named Hot-Blooded Detective Joe. The PlayStation logo's designer, Manabu Sakamoto, went through 20 different designs before Sony finally settled on the final one. During development, the PlayStation's codename was called PSX, short for PlayStation Experimental. This is where the fan nomenclature came from when referring to the first PlayStation as PSX. The famous PlayStation boot screen isn't actually stored on the system, but rather on the disc. This was one of the earliest forms of region locking and security on the PlayStation 1. A European game with the text SCEE -E would not boot on a US PlayStation because the text was not SCEA. Modders and hackers still bypass this protection with a number of methods, but the most common being mod chips. When the system would request the region code, the mod chip would simply inject the correct region code regardless of whatever software was being played. PlayStation was the second console to ever offer external memory cards for game saves. The first was actually Neo Geo. In 2013, the creator of Minecraft, Marcus Pearson, was invited to E3 by Sony with a golden PS1. The PS1 ended its life cycle with 2,418 games, selling 962 million units. These games total up to about 1.49 terabytes, which is roughly the equivalency of 31 PS4 discs. During E3 1995, Sega stunned many by announcing the Sega Saturn was available immediately for $399. But when Sony took the stage, they simply uttered $299, which led to the platform's overwhelming dominance over the Saturn. A brief presentation. Back in the day, it was uncommon, but sometimes possible to see early PlayStation consoles flipped upside down at your friend's house. The console's cheap plastic could potentially melt, and the laser would shift. Placing the console upside down often fixed this. Due to a nationwide ban, it was actually illegal to buy a PlayStation in China from the years of 2000 to 2015. The first Sony internally developed game was Motor Tune Grand Prix, and was led by Kazunori Yamauchi, who is better known today for the Gran Turismo franchise. The rarest PS1 game right now is Elemental Gearbolt Assassin's Case Edition. This bundle included the game, a gold light gun, carrying case, and memory card. Only 50 were made and given away during E3 1998. One of the strangest peripherals ever released for the PS1 was for ZXED Legend of Plasmalite, a fighting game with robots. You could build a real-world model of the robot you wanted to use in the game and plug that into the memory card slots. The game would recognize what you built and put it into the game. Sony also released a cable that would link to a mobile phone, with a cell phone data plan, even back then. One could use the internet or download very simple games for your phone. This never made it to the US. One of the strangest and definitely rarest titles for the PlayStation is LSD Dream Emulator, a game never released outside of Japan that is based on the developer's dreams. 
The PS1 CPU was actually also used to power NASA's Horizon space probe for Pluto in 2006. Despite the technology being primitive by 2006 standards, it was chosen for its reliability and sustainability after a little modification on NASA's part. Spyro the Dragon, released in 1998, was one of the first games to really master a development technique called Level of Detail. This meant the player could see very far away in the game without frame rate drops. And Level of Detail also meant that everything in the world would render to the player, so even if something was far away, it would still show. It just wouldn't be as detailed. But when the player got more close, the object would become more refined. Before the DualShock controller, controllers in Japan were actually 15% smaller than Europe and America. Initially, Sony's internal testing and conclusion was that people in the West had larger hands. Once the DualShock came out, it was the same size for all regions. Early on in the PlayStation's development, it was actually unclear whether the platform should focus on 2D or 3D. It wasn't until Virtual Fighter hit Japanese arcades that made the decision instantly clear. Crash Bandicoot was almost named Willy the Wombat. This was seen as more family-friendly and was heavily pushed by Universal Interactive Studios. But studio heads Andy Gavin and Jason Rubin threatened to leave production if they couldn't name their own character had some very interesting ideas about where they wanted the character to go. Uh, some of the names that they stuck on and actually printed up materials, Wessels the Wombat, uh, Willy the Wombat, Wuzzy. And for our final fact, Skyrim has never officially been ported to the PlayStation. Wait, I know you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know there was, there's gotta be at least one or two things in there you probably didn't know. Come on, you gotta give me credit. Uh, you gotta give me credit. Come on. All right, but uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates here on YouTube, and I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.